Hey guys, Nick Heiser here, and today for my passion project, Miss Allender's English class, we'll be talking about the history of the Atlanta Hawks. In late 1949, the NBL and BAA merged forming the NBA, and during that time of merging, the newly founded NBA created 17 new teams, including the Hawks. The Hawks, the Hawks started off as the Tri-City Blackhawks. The Tri-City Blackhawks played in the three cities of Moline, Illinois, Rock Island, Illinois, and Davenport, Iowa. In their first game, the Blackhawks beat the Denver Nuggets, who were also a part of the NBL, 93-85. How, however, after losing their next six games, Coach Roger Potter was fired and replaced by Arnold Auerbach. Under the Auerbach, the Blackhawks would go on to finish in third place with a 29-35 record, finishing in third place in the Western Division. In the playoffs, the Blackhawks would be knocked off by the Anderson Packers in a three-game series. Following the season, Auerbach would not renew his contract, taking the coaching job with Boston Celtics, who would go on to build a dynasty. Along with Bob Cousy, the Blackhawks would trade to the Chicago Stags shortly after the draft. Cousy, who ended up in Boston after the Stags folded prior to the start of the next season, as the NBA was still making baby steps in its development, 66 teams would be removed during the offseason, with the Washington Capitals leaving the NBA as the season started. Most of the teams falling by the wayside were former NBL teams who could no longer survive in their smaller towns. In their second NBA season, it was clear that there was no future for the Blackhawks in the Tri-Cities region as they finished in the last place with the 25-43 record going through three different coaches. Following the season, the Blackhawks would move to Milwaukee, leaving the small Tri-Cities region behind. Upon moving from Tri-Cities to Milwaukee, the team shortened their nickname from Blackhawks to Hawks, playing in the larger Milwaukee arena, better known as the Mecca. The Hawks played horrendous basketball, playing a terrible league worth 17 wins and 49 losses record. Mel Hutchins, who tied for second and rebounding with 13.3 boards per game, the team's only real highlight of the year. Fast forward three bad years to the 1954 NBA season, where the Hawks finally got a superstar in Bob Pettit, who was drafted out of LSU. In his first season, Pettit would earn Rookie of the Year while finishing fourth and scoring as he earned a as, as he scored 20.4 points per game. However, it would not be enough to lift the Hawks out of last place as they placed a record of 26 wins and 46 losses. Following the season, owner Ben Kerner announced he was moving the team to St. Louis after four last place seasons in Milwaukee. The city of Milwaukee did get another shot at the NBA where 13 years later when they were awarded an expansion team named the Bucks in 1968. The Bucks would be an instant hit winning the NBA title in just their third year. In their first season in the Saint in the Saint Louis in Saint Louis, Missouri, Bob Pettit would earn the very first MVP award in NBA history while leading the Hawks into second place with a 33 win, 39 loss record. May, it may not have been great, but it was better than the years before. In the playoffs, the Hawks beat the Minneapolis Lakers in a four-game sweep, but when they made it to the Western Conference Finals, they hit an abrupt stop to their year and lost to the Fort Wayne Pistons in five games. The next year, the year of 1957, was very successful for St. Louis. They made it all the way to the NBA Finals, but lost in seven games to Bill Russell and the Boston Celtics. But the Hawks weren't done as the year after the loss in the Finals, the Hawks went 41-31, and went all the way to the NBA Finals versus the Celtics again. But this final series was very different as Bob Pettit scored, scored almost 50 points in each of the six series, each of the six games in the six game series, and led the Hawks to their first and unfortunately only NBA championship. A year later, despite winning the NBA championship the year prior, coach Alex Hannum was replaced by Andy Phillip, who would only last two games before being replaced by Ed McCauley. The Hawks would also make changes to the team acquiring Kyle Lovelett from the Cincinnati Royals. The Hawks would go on to win the Western Division easily with a solid 49 win, 23 loss record as Bob Pettit took home the, his second MVP award while leading the league in scoring with 29.2 points per game. However, in the Western Division, However, in the Western Division Finals, the Hawks would be stunned by the Minneapolis Lakers in six games. Fast forward again, but now six years later, and Bob Pettit would announce his retirement after a stellar 11-year career in which he became the first player to top 20,000 points in his NBA career. But without Bob Pettit in the 1966 season, the Hawks would struggle, posting a 36-win, 
loss record. A center, Zelmo Beattie, had a breakout year with 20.7 points per game and about 13.6 rebounds per game. By the 1968 NBA season, the St. Louis Hawks relocated to the big city of Atlanta. Upon arriving in Atlanta, the Hawks had virtually the same team except for the accusation of Walt Hazard, who would help lead the Hawks to a solid second place season with a record of 48 wins and 34 losses. In the playoffs, in, in the playoffs, the Hawks would need six games to get past the San Diego Rockets to set up a match with the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. However, the Hawks would be dominated by the Lakers losing in five games. With realignment, the Hawks were moved to the Central Division in the Eastern Conference as the NBA begins divisional play. The Hawks would lose Joe Caldwell in the ABA as they drafted the NCAA's all-time leading scorer, Pistol Pete Maravich. Pete would finish second on the team in scoring with 23.2 points per game. However, the Hawks were sometimes confused by his fancy passing and showboat dribbling as they finished in second place with a disappointing 36-win, 46-loss record. Despite their poor record, the Hawks would make the playoffs, but it would be a quick exit as they are beaten by the New York Knicks in five games. But the 1972 NBA season, after playing at Georgia Tech's Alexander Coliseum for five seasons, the Hawks get a nest of their own in a brand new 16,500-seat 16, arena known as the Omni, as the Hawks were guided by Lou Hudson and Pete Maravich finishing once again in second place with a 46-win, 36-loss record under new coach Cotton Fitzsimmons. However, in the playoffs, the Hawks would make a quick exit again, falling to the Boston Celtics in six games. One year later, despite Pete Maravich finishing second in the league and scoring with 27.7 points per game, the Hawks struggled all season and missed the playoffs for the first time in 12 years while finishing in second place with a disappointing record, 35 wins. 47 losses. Following the season, the Hawks would make would, would, would trade their top shooter, Maravich, to the expansion New Orleans Jazz team for Dean Miminger, Bob Kaufman, and four draft picks. This didn't help the Hawks win, and neither did Lou Hudson being hurt for the whole season as the Hawks win a terrible record of 31 wins, 51 losses. Fast forward to the 1983 season, the Hawks made a blockbuster trade, sending John Drew and Freeman John Drew and Freeman Williams to the Utah Jazz for rookie Dominique Wilkins, a star at the University of Georgia. Wilkins would have an impressive rookie season, averaging 17.5 points per game as the Hawks finished in second place with a 43-win, 39-loss record. However, once again they would make a quick playoff exit, losing to the Boston Celtics in a three-game series. In 1986 with rookies John Konkak and Spud Webb, the Hawks became the youngest team in the NBA. After a slow start, the Hawks quickly transformed into one of the more exciting teams in the NBA, led by the human highlight film, Dominique Wilkins, who led the NBA in scoring with 30.3 points per game. However, the most exciting highlight of the season came when 5'7 Spud Webb won the slam dunk contest during All-Star Weekend. The Hawks would be one of the strongest teams in the second half, winning 35 of their final 52 games to, a post, to, to post a 50-win, 32-loss record which is really good. In the playoffs, the Hawks would continue to fly, beating the Detroit Pistons in four games. However, in the second round, they, they would be overmatched by the Boston Celtics, losing in five games again. The years leading up to 1991 were great, but this year the Hawks had a complete changing of the guard, uh, of their guards, trading away Doc Rivers and Spud Webb while turning over their backcourt to, to second-year player Rumiel Robinson and rookie Stacey Ogman. Despite the, inexperience, despite the inexperience at the guard positions, the Hawks had a respectable 22-win, 20-loss record in late January. However, their season came to a crashing halt on January 28th when Dominique Wilkins ruptured his Achilles tendon, ending his season. Without Wilkins, the Hawks won just 16 of their final, final 40 games, finishing in 5th place with the 38-win, 44-loss record. 1933 to help to help get the cold Hawks heated up, the team hired Lenny Wilkins as their new coach. Wilkins, who was a star guard for the St. Louis Hawks in the 1960s, employed a defensive system as it guards AC Og and Stacey Ogman and Mookie Blaylock both were named to the NBA All-Defensive Team, as the Hawks jumped out in front of the Central Division. Division. However, despite being in first place in February, the Hawks would trade all-time leading store scorer Dominique Wilkins to the Los Angeles Clippers for Danny Manning. The Hawks would go on to finish with with an Eastern Conference best record of 57 wins and 25 losses. 
However, the Wilkins trade would begin to backfire as they struggled to get past the Miami Heat in five games before being upset by the Indiana Pacers in six games in the playoffs. In the year 1996, the Hawks improved their team and strengthened their defense by picking up free agent center Dikembe Mutombo, who would take the Defensive Player of the Year by finishing second in the NBA in rebounding and block shots. Matamba was not the only Hawk to play well on defense as guard Mookie Blaylock led the NBA in steals as the Hawks play, as the Hawks finished in second place with a 56 win, 6, 26 loss record. In the playoffs, the Hawks would be put to test as they needed five games to get past the Detroit Pistons. However, in the second round, the Hawks would provide the little challenge to the Chicago Bulls as they fell in five games to the eventual champions. Following the 1997 NBA season and the demolition of Hawks and the, and the demolish of the Hawks Arena, the Omnis, the Hawks finally got a new arena, new state-of-the-art Phillips Arena, opened over the side of the old Omni. However, in their new arena, the Hawks struggled all season, falling into 7th place with a disappointing record of 28 wins and 54 losses. Following the season, Coach Lenny Wilkins would opt out of his contract and, choose, and, and took over the Toronto Raptors. In the year 2000, under the new coach, Lon Kruger, the Hawks continued to struggle despite a solid performance from Jason Terry, who led the team in scoring with 19.7 points per game. In the middle of a horrible 25-loss, 57, 25-win, 57-loss season, in which the Hawks finished in seventh place, Dikembe Mutombo would be traded to the Philadelphia 76ers for Theo Ratliff, Tony Kukoc, and Najir Muhammad. After that trade, it was all downhill as the Hawks went eight straight years without making the playoffs, despite the help of guards Josh Childress and newly acquired Joe Johnson. In 2008, the Hawks drafted forward Al Horford, who had led the Florida Gators to two straight national championships with the third overall pick, while using the 11th overall pick acquired from the Indiana Pacers on guard AC Law from Texas A&M. The Hawks also changed their colors, hoping to change their luck, switching from a primarily red and yellow color scheme to red and blue. That year, the Hawks played okay, going 37 wins and 45 losses and snuck into the playoffs. The loss to the Boston Celtics, again, in the first round. The Celtics would go on and win the championship that year. In 2009, the Hawks played better with the 47-win, 35-loss record with center Zaza Pachulia dominating the boards that year. In 2010, the Hawks looked to build off their play playoff success by bringing in more experienced shooting to bring in a more experienced shooting guard to add a spark off the bench in Jamal Crawford, who was acquired in a trade with the Golden State Warriors for AC Law and Speedy Claxton. At the same time, they got Mike Bibby, Marvin Williams, and Zaza Pachulia to sign contract extensions. That year, the Hawks played great basketball as their record was 53-29, and 29, but once again, they lost in the playoffs in the second round. By 2011, under new coach Larry Drew, the Hawks would get off to a fast start winning their first six games. However, they would quickly take a step backwards, losing their next four games and end up losing 38 by the end of the year. But they did manage to get 44 wins, led by four Joe Johnson and guard Jamal Crawford. By the 2011 offseason, the Hawks lost Jamal Crawford, who instead signed with the Portland Trailblazers. The Hawks played pretty well the next year despite the loss of Horford for most of the year as they went 40-26 and 26 as they were led by guard Jeff Teague, who averaged 4.9 assists per game, and forward Josh Smith, who averaged a team high that year, 18 points per game. Into the playoffs, and into the playoffs, and the Hawks get met once again by the Boston Celtics, who beat the Hawks in the first round. By 2013, it was a year of transition for the Hawks, as Danny Fieri took over the team's new general manager. There were changes on the court as well as leading scorer Joe Johnson was traded to the Brooklyn Nets for Jordan Farmar, Anthony Morrow, Deshaun Stevenson, Jordan Williams, and Johan Petro, as well as a 2014 first-round pick. The Hawks also acquired Devin Harris from the Utah Jazz for Marvin Williams. The Hawks also were spenders of the free agent market, picking up Lou Williams from the Philadelphia 76ers and Kyle Korver from the Chicago Bulls. By the end of the year, the Hawks played respectable basketball as they went 44-38, and 38, but once again lost in the first round. Change was in the air in Atlanta in late 2013 as Josh Smith left to sign a contract with the Detroit Pistons while the Hawks signed Paul Millsap to a two-year $19 million, $19 million deal to replace him. The Hawks also had a new coach in Mike Booneholzer after Larry Drew was allowed to walk and he signed with the Milwaukee Bucks. 
that year the Hawks star Al Horford was out for the year with a torn pectoral mo muscle. So in Al Horford's absence, Paul Millsap became the Hawks' go-to player, averaging 17.9 points per game with the team's best 8.5 rebounds, while Jeff Teague had 16.5 points per game while leading the Hawks with 6.7 assists per game. Millsap and Teague couldn't win by themselves as the Hawks won only 38-44 and 44 and lost in the playoffs as they surprisingly made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Following the disappointing season, the Hawks took... took Look to make upgrades on defense and acquired Tabo Cephalosha from the Oklahoma City Thunder in a sign and trade. The rest of the offseason was full of controversy as emails over the makeup of the Atlanta fan base shed a negative light on team's ownership, especially eventually leading Bruce Leverson to sell his share of the team to a group led by billionaire Tony Ressler for $850 million. In between the season, the Hawks won a franchise record 19 straight games, including the perfect 17-0 record in January, the first team to win all 17 games in a single calendar month in NBA history. With the strength of their winning streak, the Hawks could soar to the top of the Eastern Conference as four, as four Hawks, Jeff Teague, Paul Millsap, Kyle Korver, and Al Horford went to the All-Star game. It would be impossible for any team to keep up with the Hawks' momentum, but they would remain on the top of the Houston finish the season with a franchise best record of 60 and 22. The Hawks' blueprint to success was one of a team effort as nobody stood out as the biggest factor, with Paul Millsap being the team's leading scorer with 16.7 points per game and 8 rebounds per game. The Hawks also got a big season from Jeff Teague, who averaged 16 points per game and had a team best 7 assists per game, while Al Horford added 15 points per game and 7.2 rebounds per game. Kyle Korver was one of the among, was among the league's best 3-point shooters, averaging 12 points per game. Hawks' success would lead to Mike Boonholzer being named NBA Coach of the Year in the playoffs. The Hawks make, played amazing ba basketball as they beat the Nets in the first round and the Wizards in the second round. But in the Eastern Conference Finals, the Hawks lost all the momentum and got swept by the Cleveland Cavaliers. After their first trip to the Conference Finals in 45 years, the Hawks looked to prove they were one of the NBA's elite teams. Before the season began, the Hawks underwent a makeover, bringing back the classic Pac-Man logo while changing their colors to red with a volt green accent. At the end of the year, the Hawks could split their final would split their final six games and ended in a three-way tie with the Miami Heat and Charlotte Hornets at 48 wins and 34 losses. The Hawks would get the tie break as the Hawks settled for the fourth seed. Paul Millsap, who was the Hawks' top player leading the team in both scoring and rebounding with 17.1 points per game and, 90, and, and 9 rebounds per game. Kent Bazemore had a breakout season for the Hawks with 11.6 points per game. In the playoffs, the Hawks played the Celtics in the first round. The series was a nail-biter, but the Hawks came out with the series win in six games. But the next round was a completely new story as the Hawks got swept again by the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs would then go on and make it to the finals against the Golden State Warriors as the Warriors choked and blew a 3-1 lead. <laughs> now on to the 2016 offseason. Hawks' Al Horford signs with the Boston Celtics, and Atlanta fills him in with the, with, 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 with the sign of former Atlanta native Dwight Howard as his way to return home to the city of Atlanta. Currently, the Hawks are having an okay season as Tim Hardaway Jr. is having a breakout year, and Paul Millsap is playing great. That's all I have for today, and all of my sources I use for this project are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and as always, this is Nick Heiser signing out. Goodbye.